So we've been studying chemical reactions. Standard 5C states that chemical reactions will usually either liberate heat or absorb heat. So let's start by creating an exothermic reaction between methane and oxygen. All right, so basically we're gonna encapsulate the methane that comes out of this tube here inside these bubbles. There's plenty of oxygen in the room to complete the reaction. So here we go. Inside these bubbles is the methane gas. And that should be plenty. And grab some of this. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of lighter to get it started. Uh, but Dad, don't we need eye protection? So, are we good now? Yeah. All right, watch this. Ooh, that was pretty cool, huh? That was just like magic. Well, it was actually a chemical reaction, June. Okay. So let's now look at an animated version of this reaction. It included methane, which I placed in these soap bubbles, and oxygen we found in the room. We initially broke the bonds by using the energy of a lighter. These elements were then free to bond with each other to form the products, carbon dioxide and oxygen. This liberated, in other words, released a tremendous amount of energy. So during an exothermic reaction, Heat is liberated. Another example of an exothermic reaction would be the burning of candles. Or when setting off a rocket. <laughs> so now we're going to create an endothermic reaction by decomposing ammonium nitrate. Okay, so we're looking at chemical reactions here, and this time we're going to look at one that's endothermic. You guys have probably seen these ice packs before. You bust them and they get super cold. Endothermic. What happens is that inside these packs, we actually have what we call ammonium nitrate. And this compound, when it breaks apart, it actually absorbs energy from the water and gets super cold. So once it gets in contact with water, the reaction begins. So here I have the water that's actually within this pack. I'm going to first start by breaking it open and actually take a temperature of it. So you can see the temperature before the reaction and whether the temperature actually drops or not. So if I place this in here, I see the water is right about room temperature, about 22 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to place the water within the ammonium nitrate and start breaking up those bonds, which is going to absorb the energy of the water, dropping the temperature of the water. Here we go. And the reaction is actually very fast. In fact, it's already feeling very, very cold. We put the thermometer back in, and now we see that it's, oh yeah, it's dropping. It's right around, wow, it's already down to 4 degrees Celsius. This is a really quick reaction and very endothermic. It's sucking all the heat from the water into the reaction. Here's the animated version. We place ammonium nitrate in a bag and then added room temperature water. This caused the bonds to break between the ammonium and the nitrate, which absorbed the heat from the water. So during an endothermic reaction, heat is absorbed. Another example of a reaction that absorbs heat is frying an egg. Or toasting bread. Chemical reactions involving the formation of bonds usually liberate heat, increasing the surrounding temperature. While chemical reactions that involve the breaking of bonds usually absorb heat, decreasing the surrounding temperatures. This is a science book production.